Hey guys, it's Sir Friction here, or Tiger Tank One Two, having to call me. I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks, where we are today reviewing the Kunze Panzer, the Tier Nine German Reward Medium Tank that you were able to pick up during the Battle Pass seasons, like probably the last couple of Battle Pass seasons. This vehicle has been in the game for I think more than two years now, and it's quite cheap. So usually it costs you nine tokens to get, and I think it's one of the best choices out there next to the AE Phase 1. But we're going to be focusing on this tank today, nothing about the AE Phase 1. We're going to do that in a separate video, and we're going to be talking about why this tank is really really cool and why i think it's like one of these great tier 9 tanks that have been added to the game that really do add something to world of tanks without causing a massive headache in terms of balance so what you can see right here is we are already using our siege mode very effectively we're playing on sand river and we have this nice little sand bank in front of us what you need to know is that this tank has a 105 millimeter gun which has the, uh, the ability to run in siege mode or in travel mode and when you're in travel mode your dpm is higher your mobility is faster but your accuracy is worse and in siege mode your accuracy is better and your gun depression is better but you lose some dpm and you also lose the mobility so it's a really weird mix where you need to learn how to adapt and when to use the right mode so when you're first playing this tank it's a very difficult kind of vehicle to master at first but once you get the gist of it you know when to use the travel mode when to use the sniping mode the siege mode you're going to be really really enjoying the like the maximum benefits you can get with this tank because you can make it into a really awesome sniper and at the same time you can also make it into a really fast light slash medium tank because it also has some good spotting values so that makes this tank really cool but at the same time you're kind of never able to use all of the the benefits at the same time you always have to choose one of the things so far so good we are already at uh, almost 3000 damage we have taken one shot by the cdc we bounced another shot by the cdc on the turret but you can see in this position with the 12 degrees of gun depression being able to put a lot of pressure on these guys is like that's where this tank is really good at if you have a bit of distance because the accuracy is really good so let us talk about the gun first and then we're gonna go over to the mobility we're gonna go over to the armor and we're gonna talk a little bit about the siege mode some more and how you can actually really adapt to the tank and make it you know really really competitive so the gun itself is 105 millimeter as I mentioned, you have APCR, heat, and high explosive shells, and you can see that the APCR shells have a really, really good shell velocity of 1,478 meters per second. Also, 268 millimeters of penetration, so these standard APCR shells, that's exactly what you're expecting from a Leo Part 1, and I think that's exactly kind of the way that Wargaming wanted to go with this vehicle. The second shell is a heat shell, which is quite nice. It's not a secondary APCR shell, but a heat shell. This will give you quite a bit of flexibility with dealing uh, with tanks that have a lot of armor. But sadly, it's only 300 millimeters of penetration, which is still very good, by the way. But since you are already at 268 millimeters of penetration, you're only going to be increasing um, your penetration to 300 millimeters, so it's not that much of a step up. But at the same time, it's a heat shell. Having heat shells allows you to do exactly this right here, where you can hit like flat surfaces that are angled in a very nice way, where APCR shells are not able to go through, but your heat shells will just be able to cut right through that part. Also, the shell velocity is quite good, so 1,100 and I think 75 meters per second uh, is not too bad, 73 meters per second. You can certainly work with that very well. Now, in the high explosive shell, they also have really good shell velocity, I think also the same as the heat shells, but sadly, the high explosive shells, they do not have enough penetration. They only have um, like a whole thing, 53 millimeters of penetration. Now... The rate of fire on this tank 
during the travel mode is actually quite good. It's above 2500 DPM, but in the siege mode, you do lose quite a bit of that DPM. Your reload time goes up. I think it goes all the way up to like almost 10 seconds. And it's at first like really confusing because usually when you think of the siege mode, you'd think that you'd have a higher rate of fire because you also lack the mobility to get away, but it's not that kind of way. So yeah, but in sniper mode, your aim time is really good. Your accuracy at 100 meters is like 0 0.3. And that obviously changes once you're in the siege mode, uh, in the travel mode. In the travel mode, your accuracy is somewhere along the lines of 0 0.38. So it's really inaccurate. And your aim time also goes up to about 2 seconds. Um, 2.2.4, I think, is the norm. So that makes it quite difficult to play this tank effectively in the travel mode unless you actually do something about the very bad characteristics which are um, aim time and which are the um, the lack of accuracy you can actually do that by using the right equipment so i'd say we jump into the next game where i can talk a little bit about when to switch the modes and how useful these modes are and just how much like flexibility they provide you with and we can also talk more about the um, mobility aspect of the vehicle and also the armor aspect of the tank. So, second gameplay, we're on Lakeville, tier 9 matchup, no tier 10s this time around, and some tier 7s. This is a game that starts off really horribly and becomes a lot better by the end. <laughs> Don't worry, just bear with me. The vehicle itself... Um, is really, really badly protected by any incoming shells. We can talk about the armor real quick here before we go over to the mobility because it's, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward kind of scenario. This tank has 1,600 HP and, well, just like any other fast, medium tank, usually it doesn't have the armor to go into these close quarter fights. The Kunzepanzer is really, really a bad tank when it needs to fight against vehicles that have more armor and that have the ability to shoot the vehicle from the front or the side because the Kunz is not going to be able to bounce most of the rounds. The hull armor is only uh, measly 40 millimeters thick at the front, 30 on the side and 20 at the back. So sadly, this vehicle is really susceptible to high explosive shells, and anything that fires at this tank will usually go through. The turret is not much better, 63mm at the front, 53 on the side, 53 at the back, and it's just not a tank that is supposed to be played as an offensive breaching tank or a vehicle that needs to hold a line all by itself while being exposed. You can see that the Kunzepanzer on the enemy team is currently trying to push the 1-2 line, which is probably the worst place a Kunzepanzer can be in, because the first, like the, the, the very first time he will move around the corner and he'll expose his, his turret or whatever, he's going to get massively obliterated by something. So he's already at 26%, and you can see that uh, he's not doing so good. Now, sadly, that means sometimes playing this tank... You should be more reserved. You should be more on the defensive. You can see that we just lost the city because we had only two tanks fighting in the city. Or three, if that. I think it might be three. But if we would have gone into the city now, we might have had a problem with the E75 and the FE. Because any of those vehicles could have easily taken us out. Now, sadly, because of the lack of support in the town, we did lose that place very, very easily to the enemy team. And now we are all in the defensive. And this is where the game really starts to become almost a shit fest because we're just trying to defend on both sides. And you know, defending is really difficult on certain maps, but Lakeville actually is one of those maps that um, is really like... <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a pretty nice experience for defenders, especially on this side. I've had quite a few successful defensive plays while playing this map, and that's just something that you can't do on every single map. That probably has to do with the fact that there's like a very big rock here, and there's a rock here, you have a lot of cover, 
you can basically just wither the storm if you can keep one side alive, which is currently the case. So let's talk about the mobility. Even though the mobility in this gameplay is not going to be really um, shown very effectively, but um, the mobility of this tank is probably the most important part next to the mechanic of being able to use the siege mode and the sniper mode. What you can see right here, this is where we have to switch between the siege and the sniper mode. You have the two second timer where you have to wait where anything um, is going to be happening. And sadly, that's also the time where you are most vulnerable. And you can see just how quickly we took two, three shots, two times from the KV-3, and it really hurts, and you lose a lot of HP because your tank doesn't have the armor to work with that. Now, the vehicle is really, really light, only 31 tons max, and yeah, that means you do not want to get rammed by anyone because the 31 tons is going to be quite a, a problem for you when like a 70 ton tank comes barreling towards you. The engine power is at 610 horsepower, but I do have the uh, turbo on the vehicle just for fun because it gives me the 70 kph top speed. Top speed on the vehicle without the turbo is 65, and to be fair, you don't need a turbo. I think your values are already really, really good. Um, 65 kph and also 21.79 horsepower per ton. It's also something you can work with. But sadly, what you can see right here, the problem between switching the siege mode and the travel mode sometimes generates really awkward scenarios where you, well, you don't want to switch into the siege mode because you want to keep the DPM or you just want to get away really quick. And you can see I'm making some really big mistakes here. I'm almost dead. I get really lucky with the next shot because somebody retracts me. It's the FV. And we're still alive by this point, and the game is looking really, really badly for us. We do not look very competitive, and we look like we're about to get absolutely curb stomped by the incoming flank. But it turns out we still have a couple of fighting tanks on our hand, and we still have quite a bit of HP. So yeah, the tank is fairly fast. It's turn time is okay with 42 degrees per second. It's not the best, but I think you can work with it. The turret traverse, on the other hand, is a bit lacking though with 37 degrees per second, especially considering you have such bad armor. It would have been like nicer to see a faster turning turret, but I think we you can still work with it. Now, the switch between the modes is two seconds, and these two seconds are really critical. And it's really important that you know when to switch and when not to switch, because this is a very unforgiving tank because of the lack of armor that you have. And you can only really work the Kunzepanzer very effectively if you know exactly when to switch the modes and when not to switch the modes. So this is really, really essential if you want to have good games with the Kunzepanzer. So right here you can see our defense has actually been really, really effective. We're also able to do some damage on the Scorpion G and on the E75 in just a second. And it just shows you just how good these defensive positions can be on Lakeville in the south. Um, because you just have so many damn alleyways or so many like places where you can hide your vehicle. And you can have a crossfire that really um, well messes with the attack. So it's, it's quite difficult. Talking about the spotting as well, the tank has 400 base view range, which is really, really good. The Kunzepanzer can be played very effectively as a light slash medium tank. Um, well, a light tank with a very competitive gun, because it can be really fast and it can reach like positions that even light tanks can maybe not reach as fast as the Kunze. If you are running around with 70 horse or 70 kph, you're certainly going to have the speed advantage on some of the light tanks. And I think that is a really nice feature to have. So if I would be playing this vehicle, um, which I have been playing this tank, the loadout I have chosen for me personally is on the one hand, um, you could go with a turbo for the mobility slot to give you even faster um, or to get you yourself even faster where you can actually be a uh, an active scout you can go with cvs in the secondary slot when you're 
doing the field modifications for the Kunze and you're upgrading it to the Scout specialization for the second slot. You can also go for the coded optics as an equipment piece, but at the same time, I think coded optics um, is maybe not needed on the tank because the view range of 400 meters base is already pretty damn good. Having said that, you could go with the uh, vertical stabilizer if you want to make the tank more competitive fighting in the travel mode as we are in right now. It would decrease your um, dispersion values quite drastically and you might be in a position where you don't have to rely so much on the sniper mode. But since I still switch often when I play this tank, I personally didn't go for vertical stabilizer, but I did play a few games with the vertical stabilizer and it did feel quite nice. Also, in field modifications, you can increase the accuracy or decrease the dispersion. Um, and if you do that, you can certainly make this tank actually quite a viable choice in travel mode. Um, just the aim time is still going to be a bit lacking and you will never feel as snappy as with the sniper mode or the siege mode. But either way, my setup currently is I'm running a turbo. I am running um, a gun rammer in the second slot because I don't have like the all of the um, the field modifications yet. And finally, I am running coded optics to give me better spotting. But I think I would probably switch out coded optics for CBS, put CBS in a secondary slot, and then go for the scouting specialization to help me spot all of these nasty little light tanks on maps that are very open that's probably one thing that this tank can do really really well and why it's such a nice vehicle that kind of is able to to be a hybrid of sorts so let's talk about my final verdict is the kunza panzer worth your time is it worth those nine tokens i think absolutely yes this is a tank that is great for players who like light tanks this is a tank that is great for players who like medium tanks like fast vehicles players who want to have a reliable gun who want to have like special um mechanics like the siege mode and the travel mode this is really cool and i think this is something that adds more to the game without breaking the balance i think the kunze panzer is really difficult to master it's a tank that really is rewarding if you play it and it works out but it's very frustrating when you are unable to really um well it's, it's pretty frustrating when you are not able to get yourself out of the siege mode fast enough to run away or maybe if you are in travel mode and you miss the shots because you are a chief's gate and you don't want to go into the siege mode and it can be a bit frustrating in that scenario but you can see like all of the abilities like the the travel mode siege mode has enabled us to rush all the way over to the enemy side get into the position, knock out the artillery, um, get two shots into the Tiger II and the SMV CC56, and now we're also running away from Object 777 version 2. It just shows you like how great it is to have the siege mode and the travel mode together. It's really great. The only downside is the very long time it takes you to switch between those modes, but that kind of also balances the tank. If the siege mode or the travel mode was just done like a lot faster, I think the tank would be too good for its own sake. But right now, I think the Kunze Panzer is in a place where it's really, really competitive. It's a lot of fun and you certainly can have really good games if you master the switch between the siege and the travel mode. And that's why I would say this is for me a 10 out of 10 of a vehicle because it combines a great gun, it combines a great platform, it combines a lot of gun depression, it combines great mobility, it combines great view range all into one package with just the only downside being that you can't have it all at the same time and you have to kind of choose between the siege and the travel mode but if you get the hang of it you have a tank that is really capable of doing all of it at the same time like you just have to kind of micromanage the um, siege mode and the travel mode other than that this is a great tank probably my favorite tank 
that I've played in the year 2022. Um, out of the medium tanks, I've played a lot of medium tanks. Uh, I think this is my favorite tank I've played in this year because it just combines like a, a whole set of great things into one and it allows you to have like a, a very cool novel feature with the mechanics without breaking the entire game in, into like several pieces like the BZ176 is doing right now. So I hope you guys did enjoy this review. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, have a nice week. And i see you on the next video.